Hello, I'm not Chuck. Thanks for clicking on this video. I hope you like it, and if you do, I hope you'll tap that thumbs up button and consider subscribing to my channel. A while ago, I designed a simple keyer circuit for use with the Sideswiper key I got from CWMorse.us. My design included a dot and dash generator, a tone oscillator, and an audio amplifier. After drawing the schematic diagram, I built the circuit on a solderless breadboard. Here's a video clip showing it at work. The keyer performed so well that I decided to design a PCB for it and order some boards from China. So I opened DipTrace, my software of choice, and redrew the schematic. Then I used it to convert the schematic drawing to parts and nets, and then I laid out the PCB. Here's the result, front and rear. When I was satisfied with the board layout, I again turned to dip trace to prepare the Gerber files and the drill file and uploaded them to the PCB manufacturer. About 12 days later, the 10 boards arrived at a total cost of $16, including shipping. I was really happy with the price and the quality. Here's the first of the boards I built. With all the parts soldered in place, I think it looks great, and I'm happy to report that it works perfectly. My idea was to size the board to fit on top of the key and attach it with some hot glue, blue tack, or some double-sided tape. I wanted to keep the PCB small. To save some space, I used close hole spacing on the ceramic capacitors, 3 mm LEDs instead of 5 mm, and mounted the quarter watt resistors vertically instead of horizontally. Even so, there's still plenty of room for easy soldering. All connections to the PCB are made using the 10 DuPont pins on the left coming from the underside of the board. Each pin is labeled on the front of the board to identify its purpose. Of course, the header could also be soldered to the top of the board, even though the pins partially hide the labels. A screw block could also be used, but this one is a bit pricey. The cheapest way to go is to forego connectors altogether and simply solder the wires to the pads. All the COM pins are electrically connected to one another and to system ground. If necessary, any of the COM pins can be used for more than one connection. Power for the circuit is brought in via the top pin. The circuit is designed to operate on a nominal 5 volts, which could be supplied from a USB source, an external wall wart, or a 3-cell battery pack as shown. The PCB includes an on-off switch. Down is off and up is on. When there is a power source connected and the switch is on, the green LED normally lights. To conserve power, the green shunt can be removed, which disconnects the LED. The pins labeled as DIT and DA are inputs from the external key and are connected directly to the Pickaxe microcontroller. DITs are sometimes called DOTS and DAs are sometimes called DASHES. The XMT pin is used to enable an attached transmitter. When the key is operated, Morse code is generated, and the ground is placed on the XMT pin for each DIT and DAW, which causes the transmitter to operate in sync with the keyer. The blue LED flashes on and off as the transmitter is signaled. Position to the left as shown, the blue shunt routes ground signals from the keyer to the transmitter, which is the most common mode of operation. If the shunt is moved to the right, a continuous ground is placed on the XMT pin, and if the blue shunt is removed, the XMT pin is disconnected and allowed to float. C.0 is the identification of the only I.O. 
on the Pickax 08M2 that's not used. I routed it to a pin just in case I think of something later to use it for. A low impedance speaker is best to use here. The one I used is 8 ohms. The 08M2 microcontroller is the smallest in the pickaxe family. In case you're not familiar with pickaxes, they are simply selected picks into which a bootloader has been factory programmed. The primary job of these two MOSFETs is switching the output from the oscillator and the transmit signal. Q2 is a common NPN bipolar junction transistor and is the only active component in the twin T oscillator circuit. The LM386 integrated circuit is a widely used audio amplifier with gain that can be easily switched between 20, 50, and 200. It's inexpensive too. The three pots are not affected by one another, which makes setting them quite easy. Here's a demo showing part of each of their ranges. I'm using a strip of masking tape to hold the keyer in the operating mode so I can use the screwdriver with one hand and the camera with the other. Overall, I'm really happy with this project. My circuit works well. The printed circuit board design is good. The quality of the boards is excellent, and the overall appearance of the assembled board on the key is attractive and functional. I'm thinking about making the keyer available as a kit, complete with a pre-programmed microcontroller, if there's enough interest. Let me know in the comments, and I'll work up a price. That's it for this video. Please click the like button, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget, I'm not Chuck.